Come here, Shadow. Bit. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I am back now in Colombia after having visited Denver and Dallas. And those are beautiful cities. You know, I was kind of surprised when I went back to the United States because I just thought the whole United States was like Los Angeles. Um, I didn't realize that you, Los Angeles was like a uniquely bad city. I didn't realize how great cities like Denver and Dallas were. I was really impressed by that when I went back. Um, so I went back to see uh, my older sister, her husband, uh, and their, their baby. So I am an uncle for the first time. That was very exciting to, to see that beautiful little baby healthy and doing well. Uh, I saw my mother as well and then went to Dallas for my first week at a new job. Got some nice dress clothes while I was out there. And uh, so far, the new job is going okay. And uh, I am dependent upon the Father to bless that. I'm thankful for the opportunity. And the, the visit back to the United States gave me a different perspective on things. And, uh, you know, I, I love Colombia for what it is, but obviously it's apples and orange uh, preparing, uh, comparing those two. Uh, so that is the reason for why I haven't been posting videos recently. And uh, I've also been reflecting that, uh, you know, these videos where I'm doing the Torah portions just are not getting views in the format that they're made. So either I'm going to change the format or just share some of my own views. For example, one topic that I want to talk about today, just real quickly, um, before I forget it, I'm going to go into Jeremiah chapter 17, uh, verses 7 through 10. Um, but I also wanted to, to point out that, uh, you know, I've had some conversations uh, with Brother Moon, and this was one of the many things that he and I uh, have talked about. So in the past, we recorded and did some, some live streams together. Right now, we're just talking by phone together. And some of those conversations really, you know, I wish they would have been recorded uh, because of uh, some of the insights there. But, you know, one thing I was thinking of is, is that there is this verse, Jeremiah 17, 9, okay? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And especially for people growing up in traditional Baptist churches, especially if you're in like a fundamentalist type church or even worse, a cult, that verse is one of those memory verses that you absolutely have to know. I'm going to go into the context of it because that verse is actually bookended by some really wonderful things, but a lot of people just cherry pick that one verse that the heart is desperately wicked, it's deceitful, who can know it? And for an unregenerate person, I would agree. The human mind is a rationalization machine. People do what they want and then their mind rationalizes it and explains it away later. So in that sense, somebody who's just following their own desires or, you know, following quote unquote intuition, if they're unregenerate, I do agree that that's true. However, my question to you watching is, how is that true for someone who does have a regenerate heart? If you and I can look in the mirror and see that we've gotten sin out of our life, we're no longer habitually engaging in things that we used to engage in, so we know that our heart is being renewed and uh, restored, regenerated, then why would we not be able to trust our heart? Um, without going into specifics, there are times where I follow my intuition and I just end up at the right place. I don't plan things out with maps. I'm going to go here on my motorcycle or I'm going to go there to check out downtown in Dallas or whatever. But when I just go, when I just follow my intuition, I end up in situations where I'm able to give a testimony or talk to someone or just be somewhere where I feel like that's where I was supposed to be. And I have been dealing with some issues as far as self-discipline recently, 
and I had in mind that I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to improve my life. And then, you know, just sort of out of nowhere, uh, I had a thought. You know, sometimes I have thoughts that I call red letter thoughts. I had a thought that, no, I need to do something different. And if I get disciplined about that one thing, even though I think that one thing's not important, that's going to snowball into discipline for other things. And that turned out to be true, even though the one thing I was focused on wasn't, like, the main thing. Uh, so I think in the sense of, of having a regenerate heart and having the spirit, if we are living in a way that is holy, shouldn't we be able to trust the guidance of our heart? The spirit is not going to ever lead us into unrighteousness or into uncleanness, disobedience, anything that's contrary to the will of the Father. So as long as we have his word hid in our heart, then we should be able to trust our heart, which I would like to, uh, to have a discussion about that uh, with you in the comments. If you agree or disagree, do let me know because... Uh, you know, I, this is written by the prophet Jeremiah, so he should know better than I. But I want to read some of these surrounding verses here, uh, starting in verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spread out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Um, growing up in California, I saw that all the time. California just always has droughts. If anyone tells you it's climate change, California has had droughts for the history of recorded weather in California. It's just something that happens. And one thing that was amazing to me is I could always, even in the midst of a drought, go to certain places and find a spring of water, uh, to find trees full of leaves growing abundant right next to that stream, even while just about the entire state was in a drought. And that's the image I have in mind when it comes to verse 8. And then verse 9, of course, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And yet, I think you have to pair verse 9 with verse 10 in order for verse 9 to really be put into proper context. I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So, if our heart was just wicked, then, okay, then every decision that we make should should therefore, you know, be wicked. And, and what would there be to, to reward or punish? And so we see here that Father is a just God. He gives everyone according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. And of course, the context of this is not that, oh, everything from the heart is evil. You look in verse 7 and verse 8. This is about the man who trusts and obeys the Father. So obviously the heart is capable of good. Um, and, and, you know, I have this theory that um, it's changed over time, but one thing that's helped me with my mental health, because I've struggled with depression all my life, is I've started to, like, categorize my uh, thoughts. You know, in the same way that your email inbox might have a spam or a social network or whatever different categories to organize things, I've had this sort of awareness of, you know, once in a blue moon, I, I can hear that still small voice, and I call that a red letter thought, where I know that it's something I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. It's like, uh, you know, I'm getting the guidance that I've been looking for. And then maybe I've got, you know, the normal thoughts, which, sure, could originate from within me, could even originate from within that uh, deceitful heart. Uh, and one thing that's helped me out the most uh, with, with my mental health, at least in the past few years, is, is an awareness. I'm not sure when exactly I started becoming aware of this, but uh, that I am not my thoughts. These thoughts pass through me, and it's about what I choose to act on or not. And I want to go back to this verse to unpack that a little bit. 
So blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. You know, we see this just right before it says the heart's deceitful above all things. So I suppose if we're following our own heart, contrary to the will of the Lord, that would be true. But we see all these blessings that go along uh, with obedience, with trusting in the Lord. So I'd be curious about your thoughts on this subject. I'm probably going to be replacing, at least for the time being, the idea of doing a Torah study with the idea of uh, sharing what's been on my heart and mind over the course of the week. I talked about this a little bit privately uh, with Brother Moon. Uh, hopefully he shares some of his thoughts on his channel as well. I think he's got a really great perspective on things uh, as well. And so, brothers and sisters, I just want to thank you for your support, your kind words to this channel. I wanted to, to get back on here to say hello and to say that I'm doing much better than I had been doing. The only exception would really be this haircut. This is one of the worst haircuts I've had in my life, so I'm going to have to get that fixed. But other than that, things are going really well. Blessings, brothers and sisters. Shalom.